member for Western Arctic. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, as a northerner, long-time northerner, lifelong northerner, uh, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to to address this bill, the uh, devolution implementation bill that's in front of us, C-15. Uh, I'd first like to congratulate the Premier of the Northwest Territories, Bob McLeod, his cabinet ministers and the staff for the hard work that they put in on this, on this file. And that kind of extends back through the time of uh, the Northwest Territories to many other people who have dedicated their service in, in building a territory that, with political rights that are equivalent to other parts of Canada. Mr. Speaker, C-15 has two very significant and different parts of the bill. One makes parts the changes to the Northwest Territories Act, an act which is for virtual purposes the constitution of the Northwest Territories. All actions within it fall under the Northwest Territories Act. And then other act, uh, the other laws that are being uh, change to implement the devolution agreement between Canada and the Northwest Territories. The second part brings in changes to the Mackenzie Valley Resource Management Act and primarily doing away with the regional board, land and water boards created through land claims agreements with the First Nations, replacing them with a single super board, land and water board. There are other changes in the act and I'll, I'll speak to those as I go along. There are very significant other changes that uh, apart from what the minister has said, will leave even stronger powers for the minister uh, over resource development in the Northwest Territories. It's quite clearly the case. We uh, support devolution in, in our government, uh, in, in, the North, in the New Democratic Party. We support devolution and we, we see this as a step forward for the Northwest Territories in some respects, and we will look to the bill going to committee, we will look to the opportunities that we have to, to put forward amendments that may better serve the people of the Northwest Territories. The devolution part of the bill partially realized the dream Northerners had for over 50 years, taking more authority over their lives from bureaucrats in Ottawa. I've lived that life and I know what that life is. The Carruthers Commission, of course, in 68 moved the capital uh, of the Northwest Territories to Yellowknife and brought a number of bureaucrats there. But that was, I think, what we could call second stage colonialism. We, we brought the federal government into the Northwest Territories and uh, to, to the greatest extent they, they ruled the North, from, from the North rather than from Ottawa. The federally appointed commissioner of the Northwest Territories was a speaker, premier, and a lieutenant governor, governor, all rolled into one up until 1975. In 75, we had our first elected territorial council of 15 members. And this includes, of course, the, the territory known as Nunavut now, under one roof. Before that, a mixture of people elected and appointed by the federal government provided governance. Executive power still lay with the commissioner, assisted by a deputy and an assistant commissioner. With uh, the appointment of John Parker in 1979, the move began away from an executive commissioner towards a more ceremonial role as lieutenant governor. And I'll get back to that point because it's a point I want to bring up in, in this particular speech. In the late 80s, Health Services Administration of Justice and Management Forestry would devolve to the governor of Northwest Territories, who I think has handled all of those as well as can be and, and deserves great praise for providing services to people across a vast territory uh, with uh, limited resources. We've taken on education, social services, highways, airport administration, and a number of other uh, of the, the roles that would, would be classified as, as provincial. Other devolution, that was never satisfactory to the North as after the 90s when when we had constitutional development conferences in, in the North where we talked about our future, what direction we would take. I think we all felt that we wanted to be a unique place in Canada. We wanted full respect for Aboriginal governments. We wanted partnerships between Aboriginal governments and public government so that we would have a territory that would truly represent the people, the history, 
the real claim that First Nations have to the, to, to the land and to the resources of the North. That, is, I think, is a dream that still is held by most Northerners. So devolution efforts in the early part of the 2000, virtually with the Liberals, the deal was virtually the same as this. Perhaps a little better money at the time they were offering, and I think a little more control over development. So that deal was actually rejected in the end by the parties because there wasn't a common agreement. And I think one of the great accomplishments of Premier McLeod with the devolution file has been to bring many of the First Nations on board. Now, Premier McLeod himself is of Aboriginal descent and has played and has a great deal of respect among First Nations people, among all of us in the North, for his, uh, his strength and his uh, 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 fairness. So uh, we're, we're, I think that's, that's something that has helped the devolution file tremendously. The MVM, MVMRA part of the bill, however, implements a conservative desire to move forward with more rapid resource development in the Northwest Territories. That's what we see here. That's that sees the purpose of this. And this is the great trade-off that is being made with this bill. The, the trade-off that we all have been uh, uh, put it under. When I did a, a comprehensive audit of people's attitudes towards changes in the MVMRA done by outside consultants uh, a year and a half ago, it was pretty clear that most people in the Northwest Territories were not thinking that the regulatory system needed more than uh, some very straightforward tweaking. One thing we all did agree with was that the land use plans which are part of the MVMRA needed to be completed, including McCrank. So everybody agreed to that. This government has not moved very fast to make that happen, which was one of the biggest problems we had in the regulatory system. For more than 20 years, the Aboriginal people in the Northwest Territories have hung their hat on having some say and control over resource development, uh, process on lands and waters, and they've tied this to the MVMRA uh, with their duly developed land claims agreements in the, in the, with the Gwich'in, with the Satu, and with the Tlicho governments. So th these people have agreed to regional boards. They have supported regional boards. Yes, there is provisions that perhaps one single board could be made, but what we found in the Northwest Territories is the regional boards actually provide a useful and necessary function within the Northwest Territories to clearly provide that, that vision that we talked about earlier, the vision of a territory that had balance between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal governments. So what we're going to see with this bill is that particular structure is going to be changed to a single board. This may be able to be changed back later if that is a very much a question that's up in the air now. But certainly with an NDP government, we would take a we would go back and take a look at this. We would go back and, and see whether this was appropriate to the development of the Northwest Territories according to how the people see their development take place. The MVMRA remains a federal legislation, but it is an essential part of how the balance of the Northwest Territories is developing. Let's talk about the changes to the uh, NWT Act for devolution. The question here is, are we moving to more provincial-like powers? And yes, and the administration of environment, the administration of land, yes, we are. The enforcement of those provisions, yes, we are. Those are things that are valuable, and I thank all of those involved in pushing those forward for the people of the Northwest Territories. But there are other things that trouble us in the bill, and we look for amendments, perhaps, when it comes to directions to the commissioner. Remember I mentioned the commissioner was moving more to the state of being a lieutenant government ceremonial position. This bill draws him back into the fold of the federal government. Under C-15, section 4, the commissioner must act in accordance with any written instructions given to him or her by the governor and council or the minister. This is stronger language than in the current NWT Act. 
The Yukon Act contains no comparable sections. And in Nunavut, these instructions are made public through tabling in the Legislative Assembly. So, what do we see here in this particular section of the Devolution Act? We see actually more control being applied through the Commissioner's office. Strengthening the federal government's control of the NWT when combined with the provision of Section 29, which adds the power of the minister to order the commissioner to withhold assent of bills before being the bills that are passed in the legislative assembly, the commissioner, under the instruction of the minister, can hold, withhold assent to those bills and has up to a year to do it. So what we see there is fairly strong control over any changes that could be made in the Northwest Territories in the years to come, with different governments there that may have different, different uh, agendas than the pre present government or any other government. Borrowing. This bill continues the process where Ottawa sets the amount of debt the NWT can acquire. NWT debt is not a burden on Canada. This is an outdated colonial practice which inhibits our development by not allowing us to invest in things like hydroelectric uh, generation capacity. We have to go to the federal government cap in hand and ask them, please, sir, can you give us a little more borrowing power? Can you make it a little easier? Can you possibly let us do something that we know is good for our people? I, I put a bill forward in last parliament. This issue has been very well discussed. This issue is very well understood. The opposition at the time voted unanimously. We passed that bill through second reading. Only the Conservatives wanted to limit the borrowing capacity of our government. So what's it like in the provinces? The federal government may not give direction to a provincial lieutenant governor. All natural resources are completely under the control of the provinces. No Ottawa interference. There is no control over borrowing. The lieutenant governors can't be directed to not assent to bills. These are things that are in the, in the devolution agreement. So what we see is the devolution agreement gives us more in certain areas, but puts on certain reins on us in other areas that, that limits our capacity unlike other Canadians. These things can be changed by amendments. And I, I encourage the government to support some amendments that will give us give us more flexibility under this Act. Let's move on to the changes to the MVMRA. The MVRMA, sorry. This eliminates regional boards created through the land use process. It replaces them with one super board with only 11 members. This bill also gives the minister the right in any part of the of this bill, with any of the boards that it will exist in the Northwest Territories, provide binding policy decisions to those boards. In other words, in other words the minister can say to the boards, this is, what, this is how you will judge actions. This is the way it will be judged. There's no consultation with the government of the Northwest Territories included in that provision. That would make sense. That would make sense that the people that are taking care of the environment and the land would have some influence over the policy decisions that are going forward to the boards that make decisions about development. What would be wrong with providing that consultation to, to the government of the Northwest Territories? Once again, simple amendment, we can put that in place. If this government wants to listen, that's fine. You know, we did, there's been environmental audits done in the Northwest Territories. The main problem with our regulatory system by these independent environmental audits that were done in 2010 was that foot dragging by Ottawa on appointments and on approvals of developments was the biggest impediment to resource development in the Northwest Territories. Now we're going to have a system where one government controls some things and the other government can have a say over everything when it comes to resource development. This is a difficult situation. This is going to lead to conflicts. We need one government in charge 
of making decisions, and that should be the government of Northwest Territories. In consultation and working together with the First Nations, who have a right to land and resources in the Northwest Territories, to, who we want to have as complete partners in the development of the Northwest Territories. This is, a, this is a goal that we all have. Remember, that's a goal that Northerners have in the Northwest Territories. We're not interested in matching up to Alberta. We don't want Alberta in the Northwest Territories. That's not what we're here for. We want our own government, under our own rules, with our own relationships, with the, with the groups that make up the North and have lived there for hundreds and thousands of years and have done very well with that. Uh, there's strong opposition to the First Nations to the changes to the MBMRA. The Gwich'in Tribal Council, a unanimous decision to reject, made at a meeting held in Nubik by community leadership representing all, all the Gwich'in communities. Uh, this is the words of Tribal Council President Robert Alexi. My people have spoken of what Canada is proposing is clearly unacceptable. Thank you. Cleacho government is opposed. There's no need to change the Wakwazi Land and Water Board, Grand Chief Eddie Erasmus says. There's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's working very well. Why fix something that is not broken? You know, we have a pro appointments. Why is the minister holding on with tightness to all the appointments to all these boards? Why is he making that a nomination from the government of Northwest Territories to any of these boards must need his approval. Why do Aboriginal governments who make nominations to these boards need the minister's approval? How is that devolution? How is that taking our own charge over our affairs when nominations can be rejected outright? When it comes to the chairs, of these boards, of the new super board, the minister only has to consult on appointing a chair. So the minister's man will be in Yellowknife, head of the super board. He will be getting instructions, binding policy direction from the minister about how things develop in the Northwest Territories. How does that represent true devolution? I don't, I don't know if anyone across the way understands, uh, but if they go talk to their provincial counterparts, they may understand what, what provincial-like powers actually are. And in the Yukon, and the minister said, oh, well, the Yukon's doing so well with environmental assessment. The Yukon actually makes decisions for itself. The Yukon First Nations make appointments to their boards. The Yukon is doing it in themselves. This act doesn't permit us to do the same things as the Yukon is doing. Mr. Speaker, I've been through two phases of colonialism in my life. The first, when the federal government existed in Ottawa and they simply sent representatives up to govern us on it. By every couple of years, I was a student in school and the different kids would come from Ottawa because their parents would be sent up there for a couple of years to do northern duty. Uh, uh, I, I, I had great friends with, with people from Ottawa from their, with their children, but they weren't northerners. So that's phase one. Phase two was when the government came to the north. And we've made remarkable progress in that time. We have done a lot with our, with our territory. It's a, it's a great territory. It's one I'm absolutely proud to represent here in the House of Commons every day. I love the place. I want it to grow. I want it to be, I want to be a Canadian just like everyone else. But what we have here is only the third stage in colonialism. The stage in which we take care of most things on the ground, but the decisions lay in Ottawa. There's where we're at. We're going to work this with the government as much as we can. But in the end, we know that our job as New Democrats will be to give the people of the North a real say, a say that is equivalent to other Canadians in how they manage their affairs. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.